with that, we'll switch to um, the next presenter, who is uh, Leanne DeMay. And the title of her talk is Evaluating Bilateral Asymmetry in the Proximal Femora of Homo Sapiens and Pantroglodytes. Yes, hi everyone. Oops, how do I get this to, there we go. So before we begin, I'd like to thank Dr. Orr, Dr. Salcedo, and Dr. Warner, who are my capstone committee members, the MSMHA program, and the American Museum of Natural History and the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, where I collected my surface scans for my project. So manual laterality studies have been used to address the evolution of human laterality and the pressures that cause extreme lateralization unique to humans. So far, these studies have focused primarily on handedness, which is a reflection of underlying cerebral asymmetries. 90% of humans are right-handed, and we are the only primate species to show such an extreme level of lateralization and at a species level. Human handedness is thought to have evolved as a result of left hemispheric specialization for functions unique to humans, such as language and tool use. Due to lack of hominin fossils, the best way of exploring the origins of human laterality is non-human primate comparative data, and specifically great apes with whom we share a last common ancestor with. So similarly to how most humans are right-handed, most humans are also right-footed. Anatomical analyses have shown that handedness is reflected in skeletal asymmetries in humans. Skeletal asymmetries are also seen in the lower limbs of humans, although it's not quite clear whether those are due to a lower limb preference or not. While both behavioral and anatomical analyses of footedness have been conducted in humans, very few behavioral analyses of footedness have been conducted in great apes, and to the best of my knowledge, no anatomical analyses of footedness in great apes have been done. So to begin to fill this gap, my study is focusing on the proximal femora of humans and chimpanzees. Since there are no previous anatomical analyses of footedness in great apes, we're using a previous analysis of femoral asymmetries in humans used for clinical applications like hip replacement surgeries. So these measurements include neck shaft angle, transepicondylar axis antiversion, horizontal femoral offset, and femoral head diameter. So if these femoral asymmetries are in fact due to extreme unique lateralization in humans, then the difference in measurements between the left and right femur should only be significant in humans. So our hypothesis is that if footedness parallels handedness evolutionarily, then we should expect humans to display higher levels of femoral asymmetries than chimpanzees. So this would mean that the difference between the left and right femur for each measurement should be the highest in humans. So to begin my project, I brought the Artex Space Spider Scanner to the Cleveland Museum of Natural History and the American Museum of Natural History, where I collected surface scans of the left and right femora of 56 humans and 58 chimpanzees. These surface scans were then imported into Artex Studio software, where I created 3D surface models for each femur. These models were then imported into MATLAB where we calculated all of our measurements. Once the data set was complete, we imported that into SPSS statistical software, where we tested to see whether the left and right femur were significantly different from one another for each measurement, then to see whether humans or chimpanzees were more asymmetric, and then to see whether there was a level of directionality in these asymmetries to one side versus the other. So our first test was seeing whether there was a significant difference between the left and right femur for each measurement. So neck shaft angle is defined as the angle between the true neck axis and the anatomical axis. TEA antiversion is defined as the angle between the true neck axis and the trans epicondylar axis between the medial and lateral epicondyles. Horizontal femoral offset is defined as the perpendicular distance between the femoral head center and the anatomical axis and then also femoral head diameter. So for humans, all of the measurements were not significantly different between the left and right femur, except for TEA antiversion. And for chimpanzees, all of the measurements were significantly different between the left and right femur, except for TEA antiversion. So our next test was seeing whether humans or chimps were more asymmetric based on absolute difference of measurements, which is the total distance between values without considering the negative or positive values that would show levels of directionality. So for neck shaft angle absolute difference, humans and chimpanzees were significantly different from one another, with chimpanzees actually shown to be more asymmetric than humans. And TEA uh, antiversion absolute difference was not significantly different between humans and chimpanzees. 
So horizontal femoral offset absolute difference was significantly different between humans and chimpanzees, but this time humans were showing to be more asymmetric than chimpanzees. For head diameter absolute difference, humans and chimpanzees were not significantly different from one another. So our last test was seeing whether there was a level of directionality to these asymmetries based on raw difference of measurements, which is always calculated by the right femur minus the left femur. So that means that a negative value would indicate a left preference and a positive value would indicate a right preference. So neck shaft angle raw difference was not significantly different between humans and chimpanzees, but TEA antiversion raw difference was significantly different between humans and chimpanzees. So this is showing that humans are displaying a left preference and chimpanzees are displaying a slight right preference. So both horizontal femoral offset and head diameter raw difference were not significantly different between humans and chimpanzees. So overall, humans and chimpanzees are both asymmetric, but in different measurements according to our results. So this rejects our hypothesis that humans would have a larger difference between the right and left femur for each measurement. Also, the only measurement in our study to really distinguish humans from chimpanzees was TEA antiversion, with humans showing a slight left side bias and chimps showing a slight right side bias. So future investigations need to look into whether these femoral asymmetries are in fact due to a lower limb preference and chimps just happen to have a greater lower limb preference than we would have expected, or if they actually don't have to do with lower limb preference and they are due to other factors such as developmental fluctuations. Also, future investigations should look into the biomechanics of TEA antiversion, as it's the only measurement in our study to really distinguish humans from chimpanzees and then see how it relates to lower limb preference. Then we can see how footedness is reflected in cerebral asymmetries. Thank you. And does anybody have any questions? Awesome. Thanks so much, Leanne. Um, we do have a question. Um, do the different leggedness have any functional implications between humans versus chimps and susceptibility to injury? So leggedness in humans versus chimpanzees will be different mainly because we're bipedal. So all of our weight is being put onto our legs. So even if you're right footed, your uh, right dominant foot will be you know, doing manipulative tasks while your left leg will be doing a lot of the weight bearing properties. So a lot of weight still going on both legs. As for chimpanzees, um, since they're quadrupeds and are using you know, their um, front limbs and, and their hind limbs, there will be different implications. That's why we need to investigate the biomechanics of each measurement. Awesome, so I know you talk, I have a question. Um, you talked about a lot of future directions. If you could choose one, like if you were continuing this project, what is the thing that you would choose to continue to look at with this? See, that's tough because overall, I'm really interested in the cerebral asymmetries, but in order for us to do that, we need to have a better idea of whether these femoral asymmetries are due to lower limb preference. So that would entail getting more, you know, specimens of part of our, um, study and then calculating more measurements and then doing bi more biomechanical studies. So I think it'll be really interesting to investigate uh, the biomechanics of TEA antiversion since it really stands out in our study and see how that's related. Awesome. Thank you so much and great job. Great project. 